Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's go Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to the Army of Satan part 22 Dark Side of Processed, processed Food, Food Industry. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. The other thing that's very important is to recognize the problem of food. We live in a completely unjust food system. In America, because sugar can be produced much cheaper in places, they put all of these restrictions on the importation of sugar. And so Americans now are eating corn syrup produced in America and getting fat from this corn syrup. Because corn syrup is actually not a good source of sugar. Sugar is toxic in the sense that it proffers a specific set of biochemical alterations that are detrimental to human health unrelated to its calories. In that respect, it is very much like alcohol. Alcohol is dangerous because of the molecule, because of the inherent toxicity of the molecule because of things that alcohol does and how alcohol is metabolized in the body. So all of the diseases of alcohol, type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease, and brain problems, we are now seeing in children. And they don't drink alcohol. But boy, oh boy, do they consume sugar. Sugar is the alcohol of the child. Children are getting the diseases of alcohol without alcohol. And the reason is because sugar is their alcohol. Bottom line, addictive substances are addictive. So you can have the knowledge that this addictive substance is ruining your health, your life, your family's life, and everyone around you. And you can't do a damn thing about it because it's addictive. That's the definition. Because the biochemistry is stronger than any behavioral effort that you can put up against it. That's the definition of addiction. There's a fight. A revolution. A bloodless revolution so far, but nonetheless a revolution within the field of nutrition and health. And right now it's reached fever pitch. In part because we have now learned that the food industry and the sugar industry has actually impacted in a very negative way the knowledge and the research that went on 45 years ago that led to this premise that it's all about calories, that it's all about saturated fat, that it's all about how much you eat and how little you burn. We now know that that was a canard. We now know that that was a mistake. And so getting people to back away from something that they've believed for 45 years is not easy to do. The most important study that's been done on nutrition ever is the China study by Dr. Campbell and his researchers. This was a first-rate researcher from Harvard, teamed up uh, from Princeton, teamed up with Oxford. He was a completely credible scientist. Some things about the China study that are very important. The first thing is that the results were so radical that the food pyramid was changed to be more scientific. But because meat and dairy were completely minimized in the diet, the, the meat and dairy industry in the United States lobbied so hard that they actually changed the pyramid, which means science is no longer serving humanity, it's serving corporate interests. That's what it means. In the China study, what they found is that in areas where their protein was less than 5% from meat and dairy, there was no cancer. There was no cancer. The original study was done in Hyderabad in India. And the Harvard scientists, they laughed at it and they said, oh, they must have got the cages mixed up. Campbell replicated this science repeatedly. Some things about meat and dairy consumption. First of all, the meat and dairy today is not the meat and dairy that grandma and grandpa ate. 
The meat that grandma and grandpa ate were free range, what they would call now organic. They, weren't, they didn't have a word for it because everything was organic 50 years ago. Organic, free range, happily raised animals on farms where they actually treated animals with some dignity. Farmers actually had relationships with their animals. They treated them with dignity. So, what is processed food? It's many things, but I'm going to list them for you. And there's data to support the contention that each of one of these is a problem. There's too little fiber. There's too little omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory. There's too little micronutrients. There's too much trans fats, too much branched-chain amino acids, which are found in corn-fed animal stock, too much omega-6 fatty acids, which are pro-inflammatory, too many additives, too many emulsifiers, which now we think may cause certain autoimmune diseases, too much salt. Now, there is correlative data for every single one of these, but no causative data. And none of these drive your own individual consumption in particular. But the last one, the last one's the hook. And the last one is sugar. And sugar, and, Doc, and Gary Knell and Matthias Klum neglected to show you this National Geographic cover, says that sugar is very specifically addictive. In fact, according to the DSM-5 criteria for addiction, it now meets it it's impossible to resist. And it is also the thing that covers up the negative aspects of taste of processed food. And the food industry knows that when they add it, you buy more. It is the marker for processed food because of the 600,000 items in the American food supply, 74% of them has added sugar, which Dr. Popkin told you. So let's talk about consumption. So everyone will say, well, we're eating more. And indeed we, we are. Over on the left, we have the original White Castle hamburger. In the middle, we have Bob's Big Boy. And there on the right, we have Hardy's Thick Burger. And we even have a $6 burger at Carl's Jr. that has 2,000 calories. I call this slide very specifically the Coca-Cola conspiracy. And you can see all of the increases in sizes. So why do I call it a conspiracy? So what's in Coke? Caffeine, which is a diuretic, so you lose free water. Salt. So you take on more salt. What happens when you take on salt and lose free water? You get thirstier. So why is there so much sugar in Coke? To hide the salt. So here is how much sugar we in America have consumed. Not in the last 30 years, but in the last 200 years. And there's the advent of processed food listed there in 1965. Now let's talk about health. So over the past 20 years, you can take a look and see Blood pressure down, uh, uh, cholesterol down, physical activity up, smoking down. We should be reaping a health benefit, and we are not, because obesity and diabetes are through the roof, absolutely through the roof, and they are chewing through all the health care costs of all developed and developing countries. Coca-Cola says beating obesity will take action by all of us based on one simple common sense fact. All calories count no matter where they come from, including Coca-Cola and everything else with calories. And they say it's common sense. Well, I don't believe in common sense. I believe in science. I believe in data. Because the science says some calories cause disease more than others because different calories are metabolized differently because a calorie is not a calorie. This is called nutritional biochemistry. And when you understand this, you understand that not all calories are the same and sugar calories are the most egregious. Take a look at the price of food. Healthy food costs double that of unhealthy food, and it's going up at a rate of 17 pence per pound compared to processed food, which is seven pence per pound. So you'd say, well, wait, that means that processed food's a better deal. Less healthy food is a better deal. Well, indeed, the three countries that have the lowest GDP spent on food, US, UK, and Australia, of course, are the three most obese and the three sickest countries. So let's do the scorecard. Consumption, way up. Health, disaster. In fact, if this were an IRB protocol, it would have been stopped years ago because of the deaths. Environment, clearly negative. Companies, up previously, but now in big trouble. Consumers, in the short term, a winner. In the long term, a big fat loser. 
and finally in society, a disaster. Now, Dr. Katz told you today that there were many diets that worked. Every one of the diets that worked was a low sugar, high fiber diet. Do you know what a low sugar, high fiber diet is called, people? It's called real food. That's what every single diet that works is, is real food. Processed food is an experiment that failed. We should rename diabetes processed food disease because that's what it is. We're eating far too much processed foods. All of this cancer, one out of four people is getting cancer now. Heart disease, diabetes, 70% of people in some of the Gulf states over 40 have type 2 diabetes, 70%. They're drinking, eating all this processed food. Cancer has become epidemic in, in West Africa because they're eating all these processed foods. Eat fresh, healthy foods. Eat good foods. This is part of our religion. Allah doesn't mention food without mentioning halal and tayyib. Make your food a source of nutrition. Don't eat empty food. Don't eat too much food. So make sure your company is good company and make sure your food is pure food. These are things that Muslims should be involved in. We should, we should reject. Don't think, you know, don't think I'm going to go to McDonald's and have a halal fish. Right? Seriously, because the whole way that McDonald's, everything about McDonald's is antithetical to our Prophet ﷺ and his sunnah. And I'm speaking openly. I don't care what anybody says. I am telling you that fast food is something that is destroying people. And we have to oppose fast food consumption. Don't drink Coca-Cola. Don't drink Pepsi-Cola. Don't drink Calthar cola Don't drink cola. Drink water. Drink milk. Drink soy milk if you want to. But don't drink these drinks that have no nothing good for you and the way they're produced is unhealthy we have an unsustainable consumption of plastic if you look back there and look at the number of plastic cans that are plastic bottles of water that are back there we've got a garbage fill in isna because we're drinking this is unsustainable it cannot be sustained we have to find alternative approaches to the way we consume things we have to be committed to being green the green dean we have to, but we have to have commitment I don't want applause 
I want real commitment. I want people to commit to changing their lives. We need to divest in our homes. We need to be, we, people, we talk about boycotting Israel. I'm talking about boycotting all of them. If you can recognize their names, you should be boycotting them because these people are destroying this planet. They're over consuming, they're overselling. Costco is a crisis. The whole Costco mentality. Do you know that they don't even put labels on Costco halls so you don't know where things are in Costco because they want you to wander around because they know people will have impulse buying and buy more things than they actually needed. This is social psychology. You are being manipulated like mice in a maze. And we need to oppose this type of mentality because it's destroying people. Legislation is not having an impact on these people. They control legislation. The only thing that will have an impact on these people is that we stop supporting them because they have bought our senators, they have bought our congressmen. We need to take back our country and the way we do that is by educating ourselves and educating others and making moral commitments moral commitments to not being part of the madness that we're in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kunu shuhada ala nas. Be witnesses unto mankind. Be witnesses unto mankind. Be kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You are the best community brought forth. We have to embody those meanings. People have been really, unfortunately, they've become victims, but it's because of our lack of vigilance. It's our lack of vigilance. The, the, so this is, I, I really feel this absolutely nece necessary that we become part of the solution and not part of the problem. But we have to do it with real moral commitment. That's the only way. A very big shout out to the person that suggested this thank you very much um this just reminded me of something um i'd love to be i'd love to give a big shout out to my sister because she actually doesn't eat um some of these foods she's trying to go green as much as possible and my boyfriend of course shout out to him because he's been encouraging that we eat more green stuff than these processed Things and I've been trying to encourage people in this house, but I don't understand. Like I, I really don't understand. I guess I just don't know. Otherwise, a big shout out to everyone else that's also um, taking this step and saying no to processed foods because processed food is actually what's killing us. A child, nine year olds, obese, can't walk, can't can't do what we were doing back in the days because they're just eating the wrong food, wrong diets, just wrong everything. And then when you go to some of these websites, uh, food sites, or even hospitals, when you go to their sponsors, you will find that these meat industries actually sponsor them. They're like part of the hospital. So hospitals are not telling you the truth. Restaurants can't also tell you the truth. We're ignorant to all those things. And I also watched another um, documentary on the diabetes thing. And it was just talking about how hospitals can't tell us the truth. How these uh, things we eat are not good for us. And how people that have given up this processed food diet are actually doing now faring. Some got well. Some were doing far better than... The way they were doing um before they stopped eating the processed food otherwise it's really really up to us to see the danger in these things and then there's another thing that was mentioned a lot of things are mentioned so i'm just trying to pick a few things the coffee thing i don't think this video is new is it correct me if i'm wrong but a couple of months ago if i think this year a study came out saying um coffee is actually good i like what he said by saying scientists are no longer working for the people they are working for these corporations because they're switching up things they're so talking these things to um to support what 
these people are selling which is actually not right then why are you scientists if you're just going to lie sugar 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 is very bad i actually you know someone who likes sugar and it's very very sad i don't even i think i can drink tea without having sugar in it or even barely tasting the sugar in it and i'm actually fine with that but otherwise you have to know that it's bad and let's think of other things and other foods to actually replace to these things that we're used to i know it's not easy me myself included because i've tried <laughs> going eating just green stuff and better foods but it's just something else but i'm trying i really really try but otherwise let's try our best and let's see where life takes us from there otherwise let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video